Hello, everyone. Good morning or good afternoon. Buenos dias. What a wonderful music. I just feel so uplifted. Sarah, that's a great video to start the presentation with. Welcome and thank you for uh, having today time to talk about ESCP Business School from uh, London campus. Yes, exactly. Thank you, Lina. Thank you for um, welcoming us and for making this uh, possible. I'm really excited to to start um, yeah, telling everyone about ESCP and I hope uh, you enjoy the presentation. It is a great school with campuses all over the world. Today we will travel virtually to Paris, London, Madrid, Turin. So I'm really excited to be part of this journey. Uh, just for everyone who joins us for the first time, I would like to let you know there is a chat to the right hand side of the screen where you can ask uh, Sarah your questions and uh, we will reply to everyone at the end of the session. So with this, I am starting your presentation and I'm here watching all about ESCP. Enjoy and thank you for being with us today, Sarah. Thank you. Okay, so um, hello again, everyone. Um, I am Sarah Sen, Recruitment Executive for the Bachelor in Management Program um, at ESCP London campus. So first of all, I'm going to start giving you um, like an overview of the school in general, and then I'm going to uh, go into the Bachelor in Management Program uh, specifically. So um, let's get started. So um, ESCP Business School um, is, is the world's first business school. So it was established 200 years ago. Um, last year, we celebrated uh, the 200 years with a lot of galas across the, the campuses. It was really nice. Um, also, another fact that's really important about um, ESCP is that we have a cross-border multi-campus institution. That means that we have... Um, one institution, so one university, but with several uh, campuses across Europe in big European cities, as you can see on the map. Um, and also we are nationally and internationally accredited. So we actually are the first and only business school to be multi-accredited. Some quick facts about the school. Um, so as I said before, we are the first business school in the world. It was established in Paris 200 years ago, and we have a big portfolio from uh, undergraduate to um, PhDs and executive education. So really the whole range of different um, um, studies are available on on. Um, in our institution. Um, we have six urban campuses. We uh, train more than 5,000 managers and executive each year. Um, across all campuses and um, all our programs, we have more than 6,000 students um, and they all represent 120 nationalities. So it's a really multicultural school. Um, so it's not only multicultural in the fact that uh, we have different campuses and then you, you can travel um, around uh, Europe with, within your studies, but also because in class, uh, students are together with um, people from all around the world. Um, we have 130 academic alliances in Europe and the world. I'm going to come back to that later. Um, and also 160 uh, research active professors, and they represent 30 nationalities. So not only is the school and the students uh, multicultural, but also our professors. Um, and also one of the, I would say, most important facts that I like to highlight on this slide is that we have 60,000 active alumni in more than 150 different countries. What does that mean? It means that we have a really big network uh, and resource um, for our current students. So these alumni are um, invited on campus for careers fairs, um, for job fairs, etc. So they are um, people who already have their own uh, com companies who work in top management in, in, in big corporates. So yeah, they're a really, really big asset for um, our current students. 
Some ranking and accreditation about the school I'd like to focus on. Um, so as you can see here, um, the many different uh, programs are quite highly ranked uh, by uh, the Financial Times. As you can see, the Master in Finance is ranked second, uh, the Master in Management is fifth, and then you have the Executive MBA, which is 14th, and overall, as a European Business School, we are also 14th. And then some accreditation. Uh, so as I said before, we are multi-accredited business school. So this really shows that um, students get uh, the best business education. Uh, we have AA CSB um, accreditation. This is only granted to 5% of business schools in the world. So um, yeah, regardless of um, the business school you want to go to, make sure that they have this accreditation because this will guarantee you high quality education in business. Um, now, more specifically, our Bachelor in Management program. So this is our undergraduate program. Um, some um, specificities about this program, it's really unique because it's, it gives you the possibility to go in three different countries in the three years of the program. Um, it's, it allows students to empower themselves through multiple disciplines and also to experience the business world firsthand. So more about this right now. Um, so yeah, some of the main features of our Bachelor in Management program. So as I said before, three years degree and after which students get 180 credits. Um, it's multicultural study track and in one institution. So as I said before, one unique university with multiple campuses across Europe. Um, the curriculum, um, has um, an interdisciplinary approach. So it combines management, quantitative courses, but also liberal arts and languages. So it's really complete. It's not um, only you know, focused on business, but it gives you a broader um, education um, in, in, in business and management. Um, the track can be um, studied entirely in English. I sometimes get the question, what if I don't speak any other languages? That's fine. You can do it all in English, uh, but you can also take some classes in French, in Spanish or in German if you have um, the language requirements. Um, there are also in compulsory internships. There is a lot of personal development workshops, social projects and teamwork within this course. And um, we look at high profile students who are interested in top international careers. So this um, experience in three different countries with students from multiple countries will definitely help uh, students who are interested in international career and work in international business, um, businesses and corporates. And then also, um, it, this degree is fully compliant with international standards. And this is why we have many partners around the globe. Um, so I'm going to talk about this a bit later. Also wanted to focus on um, different accred another accreditation that we got, especially for the, the Bachelor in Management program, as you can see here, the Aquin from Germany. And then you have, uh, we are really proud because we were, um, this Bachelor program specifically was ranked as first best by uh, Le Parisien L'Étudiant uh, this year. So um, yeah, really, really proud of this um, ranking. Okay, so a little bit about the study track. Uh, as I said before, you have the option to study all in English or take classes in French, Spanish and German. How does that work really? So the first year would be uh, taught in English regardless of the campus. So students can pick London or Paris in their first year. In then second year, they can pick Madrid, Turin, or Paris. And um, they, sorry, so for Madrid, there are um, language requirements. So students need to have a B1 level in Spanish and for Paris, a B1 level in French. If they don't have those uh, language requirements, they can pick Turin and that study track is all taught in English. For the third year, uh, the options are Berlin, which would be in English, uh, or they have the option to take some classes in German. Uh, and then Paris in third year is um, exclusively in French and students had to have a high level of French because that is a work in study year. So students get to work in a corporate 
and um, follow their studies or complete their program, uh, their degree at the SCP. Okay, so what is the academic approach of um, ESCP? Um, so firstly, the pedagogy. So we are um, we focus on having small groups so that students can have high contact hours uh, with their, 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 their professors. Um, and also there is a lot of teamwork, so multinational teamwork. As I said before, students would be together with um, people from different countries. So within the project that they're going to work on in classes, they are going to start um, understanding that different people from different backgrounds see uh, business in a different way. So this will, this will already open their mind to uh, multiculturality in, uh, in the corporate world, in, in the professional world. Then there is a lot of practical, um, so real life cases, business simulation games, they do a lot of practical work. So teachers will expect students to be able to apply what they have um, read about um, and, and learned in lectures um, in their seminars and in their group projects. Um, so it's an interdisciplinary approach because it's um, it combines classic management topics, but also liberal arts and humanities, as well as language classes. So there is a module for languages. So even if students speak the old um, English track, their main classes will be taught in English, but there is a module where they can pick one of the languages of uh, the campuses, so French, Spanish, Italian and German. Um, as an extra language to, to learn throughout the, the three years of the program. Um, there is a lot of personal development, so they will develop their written competencies, their presentation st skills. There is um, a lot of presentation of their projects, so this will really boost their, um, their personal skills. But there is also a big collective project that they have to um, do during the, the entire year so that that's a project they work on the whole year that's a um, separate module uh, and that they have to present at the end of um, of their academic year and this will really trigger uh, their initiative their creativity and their entrepreneurial spirit so the the project can be pretty much anything i'm going to talk about this um, in the next slide and then professional experience, as I said before, there are internships um, and a lot of projects um, that will um, build also their link with uh, the corporate world. Okay, so um, how is the academic year um, divided? So we start in September. And usually we start early September. Due to the current situation with COVID-19, um, the start of the year uh, 2020 has been pushed a couple of uh, weeks. So now um, the official start date is the 14th of September for uh, London and Paris for the first year. Um, so this is, uh, but still, so starting classes in September, then there is a midterm break in October and then classes uh, resume and students have their exams in December, followed by the, the Christmas holiday that lasts approximately two to three weeks, depending on the, the year. And then starts, um, the classes start again in January for the second term. Uh, again, there is a midterm break in um in February, and the last exams, the final exams of the year are um, in April. So as you can see, there is a lot of time for a uh, summer holiday, but really that is when we expect students to um, to have their internships. So for years two and three of the program, the internship would be of, uh, is of 12 weeks. Um, and for the first year, it's not compulsory, but we do recommend students to take an internship. And in that um, case, it will be an eight weeks internship. So still plenty of time to come back home or to plan for their uh, move from one the first campus to the second campus. 
Okay, so as you can see here on the slide, I hope it's not too small for you to read, but I'm going to um, give you some examples anyway. So uh, these are the classes uh, taught during the three years. I know in the American system, it's a bit different because you have to pick your majors and minors, but here the curriculum is pretty much set for you so that you have the best um, business education that is really complete so this program has been decided to be really professionalizing so after this program students are ready to start working this is why it's designed in uh, this way and why the the curriculum is set um, they can pick their languages and there are some optionals in the third year in berlin uh, but other than that all the students get the same classes um, so as you can see the biggest modules so the first part of the screen is the management economic and law module which is um, really business oriented um, with uh, classes um, as introduction to European business you have finance um, you have microeconomics you have statistics and um, political systems so really business focused um, in the second module you have liberal arts and humanities so to really understand business um, in in a broader way so um, introduction to so psychology and sociology. So this is really interesting for people interested in uh, people management. So this will help you manage a team because you're understanding how people think, how to motivate them, how to manage them and how to lead a team that will um, give you the skills, right? Then uh, there is also uh, international relations and European world and history. Um, then you have the language and personal skills development module. And final module is the collective projects. As I told you before, this module, um, this, so the collective project is a module per se. So you get credits for this collective project um, as you would get credits for classes, right? Um, so this collective project can be pretty much anything. And we really ask students to be creative. To give you an example, um, this year we had a group who um, was working on a podcast project. So that was their collective project. They were doing podcast, podcast, sorry, during the whole year, interviewing professors, interviewing other students, students from other um, other programs for masters, MBAs, uh, and so on. Um, and then at the end of the year, they presented the, the results, how they manage the whole project, what's the outcome, show a little bit about their work. So as you can see, it can be um, really diverse and it can be as creative as you want. Um, yeah, as I mentioned before, this is um, especially for the Bachelor in Management program, the class of 2022, we have 53 nationalities, as you can see, coming from um, everywhere in the world, um, lots coming from Europe, but more and more um, students coming from Asia, from America and from Africa. So as I said before, you will be in class with students from uh, maybe from Japan, from China, from Canada, from the US, from France, Germany. And yeah, imagine that really multicultural bubble where everyone is um, working on projects together and, and, and understanding and putting what they understand and what the other understands. And this is really like preparing students to what is going to happen in their professional life in their international career. Um, and then the question we get a lot as well is what can we do as a student um, after classes? What is there to do also um, to, to, you know, have this community feeling? So we have a really vibrant student life uh, with lots of clubs and societies. Uh, we also organize many events during the year. So uh, students can come together um, and, and get to know each other. Um, to give you some information, uh, some examples of um, student clubs in society, as you can see here, we have the AGRA, which is the student council. So they kind of bridge the gap between students, bodies and the administration of the school. Uh, then you have uh, a lot of sports uh, and sports clubs and activities. Um, for example, this year, and students can create their clubs if they don't exist. Um, weirdly enough, we didn't have um, a, a men's soccer club in, um, in in the London campus. So they created one this year and then they uh, participated to competitions and they won all of them. So we're really, really happy and proud of them. Um, so as you can see, um, 
there is room for um, new clubs and new societies if they don't exist yet. Um, yeah, another really interesting one is the call on you. So this is um, uh, um, a club where uh, students come together uh, to discuss uh, UN committees and they also get um, to, to go to New York and and represent a country and, and participate in like a simulation of what a UN committee would be. Um, so yeah, as UNICEF or um, or so on. So yeah, then what is um, happening with career services and uh, activities? So we get also the question of how can I get my internships um, and, and how can I be li linked to the, the corporate world and the, and the professional world after I finish my studies? So our career services are really active in um, helping students um, build their CVs, build their um, digital reputation, for example, with workshops throughout the year. And they also organize bigger um, events, so networking and corporate events. As I said before, we have a really, really big um, group of alumni and they get invited uh, on campus. So there we have um, an average 130 corporates that come on campus uh, to participate even um, in, in corporate testimonials, in company presentations or in career affairs. Um, okay, and then um, they also um, help students in one-to-one uh, -one support. So if a student gets, um, for example, an internship or will, uh, or are starting to look for an internship and they want advice on um, how to better their CV, they can go to the career services and they will help them, give them advice on that. They can even have a mock interview with them um, and advice on, on how to manage, you know, uh, the meeting. Um, also, we get uh, in average, so with the, the, the links that our career services have um, and, and all our network of alumni, in average 20,000 internship offers and 30,000 job offers. Um, so this is quite um, a lot. So students do get to ha have their internships, even the, in the first year, a lot of our students have internship and don't find um, a lot of difficulties getting that um, their internships. Okay, so um, now what is going to happen after you graduate from, from this program? So um, there are um, two options. One is to start um, working, so start your professional career. And then uh, the other one is to keep um, studying and go for a master's degree. So this is um, a little service that we have uh, done with our graduates from 2019. Um, as you can see, 67% started um, working uh, in an international um, career, and then 33% of them decided to uh, keep studying. So um, What's really interesting with this program, as I said, it's fully compliant with international standards and they get 180 ECTS. So this is kind of um, opens the doors to uh, a lot of options, whether it is to stay at ESCP. We have loads of uh, mass specialized masters that go from masters in finance to creativity and communication, uh, tourism, uh, hospitality, finance. I already said finance, right? Okay, but you get that, uh, the gist. So it's a lot of options for um, our students, but also uh, they can um, go to one of our 130 partner universities across the globe. So, yeah, um, these are the companies where our uh, students are now working. I'm sure you can recognize um, big names as Amazon, uh, Deloitte Digital, you have um, Ali Alliance, you have Hyundai or Visa, um, you have the WHO as well. So uh, really varied um, type of industries, as you can see here on the street, uh, the screen, sorry, you have from um, energy and finance, IT, logistics, uh, real estate, tourism, um, so many different fields. Um, and the departments where our students are uh, working are uh, mainly in finance, IT, marketing, purchasing and logistics and management.
So this is after the Bachelor in Management, right? And these are um, the universities that we are in partnership with, some, some of them. Um, as you can see, um, many different options. So what's really amazing is that after having studied three years in Europe, students can decide to go uh, to another part of the world and, and study a master's degree. Um, and it also opens the door to some more specific masters. So if there is really a field or um, an area that I want to develop specifically, they have many, many options at ESCB, but also with our um, university partners around the globe. So I invite you to have a look at uh, this list on our website. Okay, so uh, the reasons to choose uh, this program is that um, it's um, a general management program, so it gives you the skills that you need to succeed in a business career, uh, but it also has a disciplines beyond management, as I said before, so um, psychology, sociology, history, uh, that will give you a better understanding of uh, the world in which business evolves. Um, it's still a business school, so the pedagogy is really focused on practice. Uh, there is theory, but a lot of practice and projects. And the uniqueness of our Bachelor in Management program is that you have three countries in three years. So what type of students are we looking for? So we are looking at high caliber students who really are interested in international uh, careers, um, students who are keen to experience new cultures and new languages, um, students who have the ability to adapt um, to a challenging situation and to thrive in those situations. As I said, it's three different countries. So you have to have that motivation and you have to be ready for it. Um, it's not easy, but it's definitely really rewarding and, and you get a lot out of it. And also students who want to build confidence and want to be autonomous. So yeah, after living in three different countries on your own, I can tell you, you're going to be um, self-sufficient for sure. So different ways to apply. So as you can see here on the screen, uh, the first step is to submit an online application. Uh, you have a list here of the different um, supporting documents that we are going to ask. You can find that list um, in uh, one of the handouts uh, that we have or on our website. So don't worry about this list too much. Um, and the different platforms I want you to focus on right now are um, the following. So we have this little poll going on. Uh, let us know um, which application. I can see that uh, the Common App might be the preferred app uh, for uh, US students, uh, but you also have um, our online application platform. You also have UCAS. Okay, I can see someone says uh, UCAS might be their option. Um, so yeah, you have all these different platforms that are available um, and where you can apply for our Bachelor in Management program. Then once we have revised your your, um, your grades um, and see if you, you meet the requirements both academically and non-academically because we also check your profile, uh, what you do besides studying, do you, are you involved in sports, uh, do you have a, an international exposure or interested in international career, what's your motivation for um, to study business and especially at ESCP. Once we see that you have this uh, the profile we're looking for then um, we will invite you to the second step of the application which is a personal interview. In some cases, we will ask students to take an alphanumeric reasoning test, but um, it's uh, really on a case-to-case -case basis, and, and most of the times I can say it's, it's, it can be waived. Okay, and then students can um, expect to hear uh, if they get an offer um, after three weeks of their interview. So quite quick, right? So what are the fees? So the application fees are um, 60 euros. Then you have a registration fee that's only for the first year. And then the tuition fees um, are slightly different for European and non-European students. As you can see here, uh, the prices on the screen. So European students, we understand European um passport holder. So if you have a European passport, but you live um, outside of Europe, then you will be um, able to um, 
you will apply for the, the tuition fees uh, for European students. But um, also wanted to highlight that we have a scholarship uh, that can cover up to 50% of your tuition fee, so from 10 to 50%, which is quite interesting. And that scholarship is renewable each year um, on the basis of um, keeping good grades, so good results, and participating in uh, the community life uh, at EFCB. So this year, due to the current situation, we understand that some um, families have um, suffered from uh, the COVID-19 crisis, and therefore there is an extra uh, special 20% tuition, um, sorry, scholarship uh, that can be uh, granted to um, any, any families, uh, any student who um, see themselves in a financial difficulty due to uh, the current crisis. So do ask me about that if, if you're interested and if that's your case. Okay, so next application deadline. So application for September 2020 are still open. The next application deadline for the online application is the 29th uh, sorry, of June with uh, interview dates on the 9th and 10th of July. You still have until the 17th of August um, to apply. And then the last interview dates are 24th and 25th of um, August. Okay, so that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed um, the presentation. These are the contact details. You can contact me or my colleague Shirley um, on uh, the Bachelor London at ESCP.eu uh, email address or by WhatsApp. Um, so yeah. Thank you, Sarah, so much. Um, we have a few questions, but to give everyone some time to think and to go over uh, the information, we'll play a short video and we encourage you to ask us your questions in the chat so that Sarah can give you the most personalized information. So enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Sean. I grew up in the US and I'm currently living and studying in London. The main reason why I chose ESCP Europe is because I get to study in a different city every year. I get to choose from London, Madrid, Paris, Turin, or Berlin. My name is Annette. This year I'm studying in Turin. I chose the program because I get to learn about different cultures and study languages during my management degree. The professors at ESCP Europe are experts in their fields, perfectly balancing theory and practice, preparing me for the real world of business. My name is Eric. I've always been curious about the world and wanted to see more. I'm having a great time here in Madrid. It's such a livable city, and there's always something to see or do. I chose Easy Europe because it has a strong reputation, being the first business school in the world, triple accredited and top ranked. There's always something to do in London. Whether it's sightseeing, going out with friends, or going to a show, you'll never get bored. The opportunities are endless. My favorite subject is Introduction to Business, where we have a variety of specialized professors and new topics every week. I was attracted by the variety of subjects that go beyond standard management programs. This year I did an internship with a startup sales company, which was a fantastic opportunity to put into practice the skills I've already acquired at the ECP Europe. The best thing about the program are my classmates. They're from a range of backgrounds and everyone is ambitious and hardworking with a drive to succeed. I was in Paris last year, which was amazing. Moving to new countries can be challenging, but I really feel like I've grown and become more independent. I certainly feel more prepared for my future. I'm really looking forward to my next year in Berlin. 
especially as I continue to move cities with my classmates. Experiencing three different cities in three years means you're stepping outside of your comfort zone, discovering new places, meeting new people, and learning to adapt to your surroundings. I already feel I've become more independent. Transitioning from high school to university along with living in another city makes you realize that you can rely on yourself instead of others. I like to know that when I graduate, I'll stand out from the crowd. I'm getting the knowledge and skills I need to be successful. I can honestly say this is an incredible, life-changing experience. From a counselor from Mexico that um, he has a student at ESCP London who loves their experience there. That's Kevin from uh, Peterson in Mexico City. So thank you, Kevin, for joining us tonight. So um, the first question would be, if a student is applying with the IB diploma, what kind of scores are you looking for? And are there any courses that need to be part of the diploma? Yeah, so... Um... For IB students, we are looking at, um, ideally, we look at the 36 or above. Um, so as I mentioned a bit before in the presentation, we look at students' profile in a holistic way. So the scores are important, but we do look at what they do besides studying. So um, I would say that if a student has grades between 32 33 maybe and 36 but with really strong uh, extracurricular activities with strong maths um, that is um, that is the type of profile we are looking for so yeah the, the classes that they have to have with IB and with any really system I would say is maths that's the strong that's the most important class and subject uh, we, we look for that's the only real requirement I would say is maths Great. So we should all love our math teachers <laughs> because they can get us to so many countries. It's not all about the, um, the calculus. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you for answering this first question, Sarah. And then uh, we have another counselor joining us tonight from the U.S. This is Karim. And the question is, is there a GPA you're looking for in an applicant? Also, what are the preferred SAT, ACT scores? Yeah, so we will look uh, in general at um, yeah the GPA, but uh, mainly uh, at the SAT uh, or ACT scores. Um, so the scores we are looking at, um, ideally, again, would be above uh, uh, 1,344 um, SATs and uh over uh, 28 for uh, ACTs. Um, but yes, if the score is a bit, uh, a bit below that, uh, but again, the, the it's a strong candidate in terms of um, non-academics, international exposure, good maths, uh, that gives them uh, yeah a lot of chances as well to, to enter the program. Okay, I hope we answered that question for, for Karin. Uh, the next one would be, do you consider community service or volunteering? Yes, absolutely. As part of the application. Absolutely. So all this type of experience, uh, that is what um, we we put like in the non-academics. So academics would be exclusively what is the grades, uh, the, the transcripts of the last three years, uh, the, the final results. So whether it is SATs, a, a, ACTs, final grades of the IB or other systems. Um, and then the non-academics is uh, work experience, volunteering, um, uh, traveling, um, sports, arts, uh, everything like that. Great, great. Um, how about AP classes? Do you give credit for that? Uh, we certainly take them into consideration, yes. So that can uh, definitely be helpful. Great, so encouraging AP students. And then I believe that's the last question. Um, if I don't have visa for the UK, would the, the, would the school help me? Yes, absolutely. So we have a visa officer who is uh, specialized and who will exclusively work. F uh, so she does that. Uh, that's her job to, to issue visas and to help students uh, with their visa. So um, don't worry too much about that. And um, you can get in touch with that uh, person when you start your application, if that's a concern. But yeah, definitely we have um, someone 
on each campus ready to help students with uh, their visas. So each visa officer is specialized with the country specific requirements for the visa. So um, yeah, you have the relevant. So you actually have visa officers on each campus? Yes. Yeah. So we have a visa wow. officer for London and she specialized for the long term visas for students, which is the T4 visa. And then we have a uh, visas officer in, in Paris and so on. So um, these contacts are um, available for the students once we know their study track. So they have to pick the countries they want to go to, right? And then uh, to start um, looking for uh, what they need to provide for the, the visa application if, if they need to. Actually, that makes me ask a question. So the student has already uh, declared the track at the beginning of their studies. And uh, usually they come from a new country they would only ask for a visa for the first country, giving them access to the rest. I can imagine as a student yes, yes. throughout the Schengen area. Exactly. So they should only go to the for, to the embassy of their first country from the track. Yeah. So first, uh, focusing on the first. Uh, so if their first uh, vi um, sorry campus is London, then uh, they should contact our visa officer in London to uh, to get their first year visa, and then we will um, guide them to the for the next years for with and give them. The, the right information and who to contact for the next year and the next country. Sounds very easy. Thank you. Um, we have a question which is related to languages. Um, do we need to know several languages to study with the SCP? Uh, you don't have to. I believe these are French, Spanish. Yeah, you don't have to. So there is an all English track, uh, which would be um, either starting in London or Paris, then going to Turin and finishing in Berlin. Um, if you do have uh, Spanish skills or you have uh, French skills, then you can pick, um, you have more options, let's say. You have uh, the option of Madrid in the second year and Paris in the second year. Great. There is a question on the cost of application. I believe that was part of one of your slides. Yes, I can um, go back a few. Slides. Shall we just go back to yeah. it? Yeah, just to have uh, the whole cost structure. There it is. Thank you. OK, um, then Kevin has a follow up question mm -hmm. um, when uh, when he asked about the IB program and uh, you mentioned the maths being important. So the follow up question would be which math program we offer it only at standard level both analysis and approaches and applications and interpretation. Yes, um, yes, thanks for mentioning that actually. So very specific. Yeah, there is, um, so we accept all the, the, the math programs. Um, it's only that the, the grades that would just differ a little bit. I can give you the exact grades that we look for um, for each. Let me just get my little sheet, cheat sheet. <laughs> okay, so for application and interpretation, um, there is um, the standard level and the high level, right? So for the standard level, that would be a six, and for the high level, a five. Then for anal analysis and approaches for the standard level, we will ask for a five, and analysis and approaches high level, we will ask for a four. I hope that answers the question. So these are all the different grades. So yeah, we accept all programs. It's just that um, uh, the, the score that we ask for is a little bit different um, depending on which program. Great, and uh, we just got a feedback from Kevin that that answered his questions. Okay. So there is no more questions. As my maths teacher used to say, if the class was well taught, the questions are less. Ah. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much, Sarah, for your time tonight. I would just like to invite everyone to follow ESCP on Instagram. There is a button on the bottom of the page and we'll share once again a video to give you an idea how your life, study life with ESCP would look like during which you will find the Facebook link of ESCP for you to be connected with, um, with the representatives. And please don't miss the next Student Life in London and Paris webinar by ESCP. It just appeared now on your screen yeah. so that you can get actually idea from first hand from ESCP's alumni and students. With this, I'm thanking you once again, Sarah, for your time tonight because you're actually in Europe. Uh, so it's quite late yeah, for you. I mean, it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. And uh, I'm really glad uh, to have a chance to to talk about this amazing program and opportunity. So, yeah, I'll stay late if I need to. It's not a problem. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> 
it really is an amazing school and the time in, in, in today's situation, I think we're all used to work from home and, and in different timings. So um, thanks for everyone joining us in our living rooms tonight and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Sarah. bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.